All right, we are live right now with Blaine and Melissa. What is going on? Yeah, hey, how's it going, man? Oh, it's going good. It's going good. Hey, we are live. This is the Painless Wholesaling Podcast, where our goal is to help people learn how to do real estate the painless way to avoid uh, mistakes that hopefully they can listen and learn from from us, from people that come on here, and and avoid, uh, I guess, the pain that comes from uh, doing things the hard way, right? So that's oh, why I got to be on here. So yeah. uh, what's up? So you, you guys, I, I originally met you through Jerry Norton's program. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. I love and it. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you were telling me you went to Puerto Rico. When did you get back, by the way? Because I know you, Jerry does his little Puerto Rico event. Let's see. This was in October. Yeah. It's like the day before Halloween we got back. Yeah. <laughs> I got back just before Halloween. All right. Um, and, that, and that deal we did together. Uh, so that everybody that's watching this, we actually were able to do a deal together. You, it was your first deal. Is that correct? Yes. It was our first deal. Yeah. And we were working on that while we were in Puerto Rico at the same okay. time. So, yeah. So, so a close after Puerto Rico then, right? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I wanted to have you on here because uh, there's a lot of people that watch uh, the Painless Wholesaling podcast that maybe um, they don't, maybe they're they're not sure how to get it done. They're maybe afraid. So I wanted to have you on here to s ask you about your experience. How how was it for a brand new investor first deal getting getting this done? Was it nerve wracking? Was it hard? Kind of. Uh, yeah, I would. I definitely say as well. It was a big roller coaster as well. Um, I will say a, a lot of the time. I mean, especially you know since it's your first deal. Mm -hmm. I, you feel a little bit like you're a fraud. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you're doing the things that, that are okay. You're not like trying to fraud anybody. Like right. and you're, you're doing everything right. But you, just because you don't know what you don't know, you feel like, okay, maybe, maybe I might be doing something wrong. Yeah. It's hard to be confident. That's right. Is that the word? Yeah. Like it's hard to be confident yeah, as you're talking on the phone and all that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Sound like you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think that's exactly what new real estate investors face. Is they're like, oh shoot, you know, did I did I say this right? Did I make the right offer? Did, am I making the right moves? So is that kind of some of the feelings that you you were facing when you were yeah. making these offers? Oh yeah, like, a, am I offering like not enough? Am I going way too low? Because a lot of the the comps that we were doing, I was like, oh man, that's nobody's gonna accept that offer. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so let's yeah. talk about this deal. So it was, uh, tell me how you found it and let's, I'll tell you how I got con connected with you too. So yeah, tell sure. me kind of how the process of this deal. So Melissa actually found it. Yeah. I just, I found it on Redfin actually yeah. in, in American Forks. So I ran some comps on it, gave it to Blaine to look at, and he called and made an offer. And the offer was accepted. Yeah. So we, <laughs> we were like, whoa. We we ran our numbers on it. We were like, okay, so they they were asking for, I think uh it was around 420 for the house. And uh the ARV that we ran on it, uh, we were like, oh, well, this looks like it's probably about 525. Mm -hmm. So we, we were like, oh well, you know what? We'll we'll offer 380 on it. And they accepted it. And we were like, oh, sweet. Excellent. Right. That's right. Did he represent you? The agent represent you? Is that how you got it set up? Uh, Actually, no. We, uh, so uh, Jerry Dort Norton does kind of a double dip thing. Uh -huh. um, I, I, so I called him up and I said, um, listen, we, uh, we're, we'll be uh, with, uh, we were like, how about if you represent us? This was the first thing we offered. We were like, Hey, listen, how about if you just represent both sides of the deal, you can get the, um, the commission on both sides. Uh -huh. And he was like, well, I don't necessarily feel comfortable trying to navigate the neutral waters on that. Yeah. And I said, well, how about if you just send me a, a thing that just says that we're unrepresented and you can keep the other side of the commission uh -huh. on that? So uh, he was he was ecstatic about that. <laughs> so, so, so what happened is he he did he get both sides of the commission, but he just didn't represent you and you just filled it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, now, that said, I am also I, I did get my real estate license as well. Um, oh, okay. So. Yeah. I I did know know the paperwork, but I did say, listen, you can we will be unrepresented, but I'll have you. Why don't you do all the paperwork for us? Okay. 
so um so he actually filled out all the stuff and like just sent it over to us to to sign on everything yeah but that's he wasn't cool. technically telling us w whether or not we were getting a good deal or not on it. <laughs> right right that makes sense kind of tell me your process once you got it under contract because that's when we met we i got involved later but kind of tell me what what happened until we met um let's see so well we don't have a huge wholesaler list to buyer right yeah a buyer yeah. list to pick from so uh we went into the face i went into the facebook page the jerry norton facebook page and mentioned it the mm -hmm. deal we had and then jerry i think tagged you right yeah he tagged and me, then yeah. we just reached out to one another <laughs> yeah that, that easy right that was yeah. like that right so i don't know if you know about my story with this deal but uh what happened was um with this deal at, it was listed at 450 and it just got listed. And one of my mentorship students actually brought me this deal. And he says, Hey, this looks like it needs to be rehabbed. Let's make an offer. Can you help me make an offer on it? So I said, okay. So I, I ran the ARV. I had the ARV at like 500,000, right? When I did it like a five, 480, 500,000. So I called and it needed a lot of work, right? It was an older home. It was like yeah. up and down 2000 square feet. Maybe even there, more. Go there ahead. was a there was a crack in the foundation as well. I yeah. I didn't realize it when we made the offer. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Up, until, up until his day, I didn't know that. So I called. I ran my numbers, and I was very I'm very conservative. Like I, I go high on my s my my rehab budget just to be safe. And I made an offer at three twenty five. Right. So. It was listed at 450 and I said, Hey, I'll give you 325. And the agent laughed at me, right? The guy that you're working with. Yeah. He was like, he's like, yeah. he's like, I got way better offers than that. But I had made an offer like after it got listed, maybe a couple days, right? So I was I was brand new. So I made the offer. He laughed and I was like, okay, whatever. And I kind of felt I told the the student that I was working with, uh, Bryce, and I was like, that's just how it goes. You just gotta make the right offer. So when Jerry tagged me and he sent you sent me the deal, I was like, Oh, I made an offer on this one. Yeah. And I had already comped it, so I kind of knew because of the condition all that stuff it needed to be lower so what i told you i was like hey i have someone for this but we just got to be lower yeah. so i just told you to renegotiate right and yet and yeah. you got it done <laughs> you did <Yeah>. it <laughs> so what happened was we uh we were we had a little family emergency we had to go to canada yeah. <laughs> and uh turns out like uh th this was also something that we learned while we were on in route turns out your phone doesn't work in canada <laughs> unless you've got like a canadian card right um so we we actually started negotiating with him over skype oh gosh That's so I, I had to email him i was like hey listen um maybe you got to get in touch with us so i got in touch with him and i said listen um turns out there's this crack in the foundation we weren't aware of and i i knew a guy i knew a guy that's kind of done that kind of work and he, he said it was probably a fifty thousand dollar fix right so that's what i told him i was like listen he says it's about 50 grand it's just not going to work for us but i mean unless he wants to come down at like what like to three what I, I think i said the 330 330 yeah that's correct yeah, yeah. and he said he said uh you know what let me let me get back to you then five minutes later he called me back or he skyped me back and was like yeah he's ready to get rid of this let's do this <laughs> yeah and uh then i was like oh man well i've got to be able to find somebody at this point yep. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and, and at that point, I had somebody that was at, uh, I can't remember the price, but wh whatever it was, we got it at uh, 25K, right? And yeah. we showed heat on it. Yeah, so, I, I, it was actually a little a little bit less than that because I eventually said, hey, listen, um, he does need it for a little bit less. With, like I offered 310 and, he, and that's when he laughed at me again. I said, you know what, let me call you back in five minutes. And I just kind of waited for five minutes. <laughs> and I called him back and said, he says 320 if he can do it. And he said, all right, we'll do 320. So yeah. so that's what we got it at was 320. 320, yeah. And then I, I think we got a dispo to 345. Exactly. Yeah. 345, yeah. So th this one's interesting because on top of the foundation, it, it had a zoning issue too, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, it turns out there's a lot of stuff going on in American Fork. It wasn't just this house. Like a lot of the people on that street had been just moved. Their property line had been moved about five feet south or no. Yeah, about five, 10 feet south. So part of the house was actually on somebody else's property line. Right. So we had to get a survey done um, and it 
Turns out that getting a survey done also requires you to go to the houses around that house to get signed because wow. the, the, the bigger people have to agree that that's fine. Wow. So we had to jump through some hoops on this one then, huh? Yeah. The, the real estate agent actually took care of that for us. Cause, um, I, we, we actually, the, the one of the really smart things that you guys actually suggested mm -hmm. was, um, to, to write it out that, um, that they, so, uh, so I guess to back up just a little bit, the, uh, the survey needed to be done. The buyer didn't want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. The seller didn't want, or didn't want to pay for it. Right. So we, we were like, well, okay, then I guess this needs to be done. So that's when you guys suggested, well, why don't we, why don't we take care of it? We could cover, we could cover the cost of that. But we write it into the contract that the buyer, that the seller, the seller pays for it and that we reimburse him with, for the money that he paid for it at closing. Right. So, so that way we're not stuck like with the bill. Yeah, we were okay to pay for it uh, up front, right? Because that's, I guess the seller just didn't want to pay it up front, right? But he eventually paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, he. So yeah. The 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 yeah. The seller eventually the seller. technically paid for it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just didn't want to come up with the money. So this deal was really interesting. Where it came from, four fifty. Where they they listed it really high, right? But because this this happens, like you you buy a property, you know, I'm I'm sure three eighty would have worked if there wasn't all those issues, right? But none of that was disclosed that you really can't see right. that that much on the picture. So you get a property under contract, you do your due diligence, you find out more information, property line issues, crack in the foundation. So what this taught me as I did this deal with you uh, is getting a house under contract, you can find out a lot more. Now, you don't want to get into a contract just to renegotiate it. That's not worth anybody's time, but there is a lot that can happen by just making that move, right? Just taking action and getting under contract. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot that you can negotiate after you're under contract, I found out as well. Of course. Yeah. So it's not always just, uh, you know, you're one and done. You sign, you, you agree on a price because things happen, right? Things, you find out more information happens all the time, even in traditional real estate, not even for investors. Like people find out that, you know, um, there's issues. So really, really yeah. interesting deal. So let me ask you this. I think we told the, uh, we had the seller and the buyer, right? We, we signed um, an addendum saying we're wholesaling it, right? So did the agent know we ended up wholesaling it? Yeah, yeah. so the, so it, yeah, at least here in Utah, if you, uh, it, I, you um, can't hold, or at least you can't assign the contract to somebody else unless the seller actually signs off on you right. being okay to assign it. So we had to, so when I explained it to the agent, I basically said, listen, we got, we've got partners that are, that are helping us out with this deal. Um, we haven't decided how we're going to dispose of it yet. Um, if we're going to do it or not, but, um, we need to be able to assign this to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And he, he was totally okay with that. Great way to explain that to an agent, by the way, for everybody that's will watch this or is watching like that simple, right? Not that crazy. Uh, people buy properties all the time together, you know, <laughs> yeah. not, not weird. Just say, Hey, we're going to work with some people on this deal. We need the right to be able to sign it. If we decide yeah. to take that option, yeah. we just need the flexibility to know what we're, I mean, to be able to do whatever we need to, to make the, make it happen. Right. Yeah. And, and the way I found this buyer, by the way, I've never worked with this buyer before. I called my title company that I work with GT title. And I said, who do you know that's buying in Ogden? And she, you know, Christina at GT title told me, Scott, she said, Scott's buying in Ogden. I talked to him about a deal I had in Ogden. He didn't want it. And I said, Hey, you wouldn't by chance be interested in an in American fork, would you? And he's like, yeah, sure. Send it to me just like that. That's, that's how I was able to get it done. So nothing crazy. I was trying to reach out to him about another deal, but just brought the property up to him about this one. And uh, we were able to, to wholesale it. No problem. Yeah. 
it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so tell, tell me where you guys are at right now. Are you um can are you consistently still making offers on market? What are you what are you doing at the moment? I know I know making offers consistently can be difficult, but uh yeah, tell me what's up right now. Yeah, um so uh, Melissa's our finder. <laughs> she comes through she comes through the MLS all like every night. Um and then I will call and make offers in the in the afternoon or mornings. Awesome. Um yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're, so we're, we're still, still working away at it. <laughs> still making offers and perfect. haven't found a perfect deal for us yet again, but yeah, getting that first one done though, like I feel like, yeah, I can do this. Let's do it. Yeah. Like that, it felt way better after the first one. <laughs> yeah. It's always the first one. Then you find out, okay, I can do this. It's real. All, uh, really all it is, is, you know, negotiating and then paperwork after that, right. Finding yeah. the environment paperwork. So that's really exciting. And, and I want to let you know that I had a good time working with you. And if there's anything else that you need, any buyers you need, whether it's here in Utah or anywhere, I got your back. Uh, I can help you find buyers. Cause that's kind of what I focus on mainly. And I, I told you guys, I don't know if you knew this, but um, the painless wholesaling method where I try to find the relationships with my buyers and then reverse engineer and find out what they want. That's kind of like what I focus on. And I actually have some, maybe you guys can help me out, but uh, I have some buyers right now in Ogden that are very aggressive. They're like, well, they need to find something. So if you, uh, if you're looking, if you want uh, to work with me, if you find something in those uh, areas, I can kind of give you the criteria to search. And if you find something, then, uh, you know, we can, we can JV on it just like we did on this one. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. That was excellent. And I guess just a quick plug for anybody that does want a JV with you. We didn't actually have a contract with you while we were working it out. Right. Um, right. So I guess, I guess what I really want to get across is uh, you guys are trustworthy. Yeah. Like I, I found the deal. I, I got it all set up, but it didn't work out where I had a contract out. So we kind of had me as the middleman um, working with the, with the uh, seller's agent and you guys at the same time. It's true. But nothing was signed until until at the very end. Yeah. And it, it all was exactly as we had talked about. It was fantastic. I mean... Not that I suggest not having a contract like, yeah, yeah. For, for everything, <laughs> but it was fantastic working with you guys because I never felt at any time like you guys were going to, you know, screw you. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate you saying that because there are times where I, uh, for me, I'm like, hey, let's just work it. Let's see where it goes. And then if it goes somewhere, then let's uh, let's sign the paperwork, right? And I just figured by the time we felt like it was going any somewhere, we were already pretty open and honest. And, you know, we were like, ah, it doesn't really need to happen yet. So not not always how you should do it but uh also if you feel like you can work with someone you can trust then integrity is like super important in this business so really if someone's gonna screw you they're they're not gonna last very long in this business because then everyone's gonna know about it so i'm exactly right yeah so you gotta you gotta stay true to your word and help people out and um and for you too, like now, you know, that model too. So if you, um, if anyone comes to you and has a deal, then you, you can do the same thing. You can go find them a buyer, be like, Oh, you know, reach out to the buyer that bought this deal. I can give you his info. Maybe he's looking for another one in the future, but it's all about networking. It's all about just putting yourself out there and you can get deals. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Cool. Well, I, I've had a great time chatting with you about the deal. I, I think what I want everyone to know is you just have to take action. And I, pr I appreciate that you, you two are taking action. You know, she's finding the deals, you're making the offers. That's, that's what it takes. You know, I think that's awesome that you did that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can study for as long as you want and pick up as much as you can, but until you actually start doing at, until you actually start making a call and talking to somebody, it's never going to happen. So that's so true. And it's, it's so interesting that I made that same call you did, but you, what was the difference? Right time, right place. Right. Uh, yeah. Yep. I didn't follow up. I made the offer. He laughed. I was like, I had saying going to work. You came in and who knows, who knows, maybe that offer at four, 325 that I, I anchored them with in the beginning, maybe that helped, right? Maybe, maybe that. Oh, for absolutely. sure. Yeah. I, I guarantee it did. I'm sure he got that. I told him that $50,000 less and he's like, well, uh, the other, everybody else has been offering that. So this must be what it's worth. Right, right. So I want to let everyone know also that don't be discouraged when your offers get rejected because you might be that person like you guys were for me that just came in at the right time where they've been beat up enough where they're like, okay, fine. I, uh, I've got it listed way too high. Let's just take it. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's very, uh, interesting to me. I would think that the agent would have probably called back some of those other offers. I'm sure someone made an offer like 350 or something. 
but or, or yeah. a little bit higher but they really don't they don't like keep a, a a lot of agents don't keep like a rolodex or like a list of people who have made previous offers they're just like fine let's just get it done so yeah. i've always wanted that i'm always like man if i make an offer i hope the agent just remembers me but we can see in this situation it didn't happen so you really got to follow up is really important too because uh, mm -hmm. yeah. They're they're not gonna call you. Because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> no. nope. nope. again, I made it the offer three twenty five. We did what did we end up three twenty? So three twenty. Yeah. Yep. He could have called me and been like, hey, you know, got five k more, but then I would have probably been lower, right? So very very interesting that that I think that I think that they call me, but they they never do. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, cool. well, do you have any um any advice you want to give out to people that are gonna watch this? Any any anything you'd like to kind of let the wholesaling nation no um it gets easier the more that you do it um call, calling up agents or calling up somebody and making an offer that you feel like is going to be insulting <laughs> is I, I it gets easier as you do it and you you learn that listen if you if you kind of just let them know hey listen i i realize this is kind of low but in order for it to work for us, this is what the numbers got to be. It's fine if you say no, but you know, it's, this is where, where we're at and just making the offer. It's like, it's like the people at McDonald's offering fries with that. Like, I mean, who cares? You say no <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, Oh, okay, sweet. I love that. I think that's <laughs> awesome. So you're saying just get out there, make the call, make the offer. And don't, don't be so nervous about it. Right. Like, uh, exactly. Just make it. Yeah. I think everyone struggles with that. It's like, wow, you got to list it at 450. I even struggled on this one. I've been this for a while. When he was a list at 450, I did 325. I struggled. I was like, man, that's 125 K lower. He's going to be annoyed with me. Right. But yep. Hey, you got it. You got to go for it. You got to be strong and, and, and do it. Well, I really appreciate it. Blaine Melissa for coming on and um, yeah, let's keep in touch. Uh, hopefully we can do some more deals together and I can help you out and you can help me out. All right. Would love Great. to. Thanks man. All right, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye guys.